we are back, ladies and gentlemen, with the third and final broadcast in this best of three series between Gosu Gator, the Protoss spawning in the three o'clock position, facing off against Check Prime, the Zerg up in the 12. I am Anaris, and this replay is from LastPlayerStanding.com's third SC2 Open. 48 player tournament getting pretty darn close to the end and let me just say the games have been a thrill ride thus far so let's kind of look at what we could be seeing this match check prime so far game number one he did try to play uh standard e economic build on antigua shipyards protoss did a pretty good job keeping him in check i mean after that after catching the zerg out of position at that little uh little choke point there he was just in a phenomenal lead check prime really couldn't come back from that so game number two, uh, you know, that Nidus Worm, glorious, absolutely glorious. Ghost Gator just completely uh, caught off guard by that. Losing the Nexus, losing the main, all those gateways just before they were done. Not only that, but Warp Gate was just an inch away from completion. If he had that, if he had those gateways, it would have been a completely different story. But now we are here in an entirely different map, and we're going to wait and see what happens with close by air of positions. We could see... Gosu Gator opening up with Stargate Harass. I think that would be something that would be very powerful. Probably don't want to overcommit to it, though. Or commit too much to attacking the main base. While I think it would be very effective, it would also uh, force the Zerg to, you know, just... I mean, pretty much you could just keep a couple queens here in the main, and that would be it. Not a lot that uh, could really be done about it. Unless the Protoss decided to go with a whole bunch of Phoenix, in which case, that's just darned annoying, man. For a Zerg player, having all those Phoenix running around, losing all that map control, oh, it's just such a pain in the rear. So we'll see what Ghost 2 Gator opens with. You know, he could do War Prism play. That's something that's seeing a little bit more, uh, a little bit more spotlight time these days. Especially since it did receive a 60 shield boost. So here comes the probe down here, dropping the cybernetics core. Wall off looking pretty standard there, not uh, not too surprised. Was it shield or hit points? I've been th now that I, s I said that, and I think, oh god, that's wrong. I'm having a complete and total mental block. I know this. Oh well, I'm sure, I'm sure somebody in the video is going to be nice and polite and tell me. And there's also going to be somebody that thinks that I've never played the game and thinks I'm a retard because I forgot. Oh well. I'm human. Everybody gets mental blocks. We shall move on. Because this game, I'm, I'm really stoked, man. Check Prime, he is one of those kind of unorthodox players. Pulls some pretty interesting builds out of his hat. Reacts very smartly, very appropriately. Gator down here, man, he is, I mean, I'll tell you what, he has shown that if you can get him into the late game, he is very powerful indeed. The warp gate just started. Think Chrono's being used, uh, oh, on nothing. Chrono is being used on nothing. I was going to say, I thought it, had been used, it was being used on the economy, but no, he's going to be bringing out a couple units early, actually, as he does have one probe heading up here. This expansion just completed. The scout, actually, is going to find some pretty interesting information. I mean, he's going to spot, okay, still mining gas, so maybe doesn't have metabolic boost started yet. Can't really tell. When you're playing, at least. But with two queens, a couple of circlings, I think this is going to be able to uh, be defended against. Good micro with the zealot, though. I gotta say that. So metabolic boost about 50% complete. Couple more circlings on the way. You see both queens being kept up here in the main. That's mostly because there's no real reason to come down here. The creep is still kind of spreading around, and you see he is bringing the queens to the top of the ramp. Again, this is just to tank the damage from the zealot and the stalker while the zerglings deal the damage. But now a few more zerglings. And that's pretty much just going to be it. Notice how, for the most part, Check Prime has still just been droning up. He doesn't want to commit a full wave of larva. To, de to defending against that attack because he really doesn't need to. There's only a small number of units, I mean two total, and then he would have all these Zerglings sitting around, and yes, he could use them for harassment, but when you get right down to it, scouting the Protoss base, he would know he's not really going to be able to do a whole lot of damage. By the time he actually busts up through here, if he gets past the force fields, some stretch of luck, then he's going to come up to the probes where they're either just going to run around away from him, or they're just going to be used to sandwich while the sentries and the stalker finish them off. 
So Check Prime coming over here. Jordan is trying to deny the expansion. Again, this is about as far as we're going to see him extend. But as he continues to drone up, I would not be surprised if we saw him go for some type of aerial harass. Notice how he is working on double gas right now, going into tier 2. Zergling's still running around. We're not seeing any indication of a Roach Warren going down. So I think that that gas is just going to be continuing to accumulate as we watch those Zerglings keep an eye on the Protoss, waiting to see if there's going to be uh, a probe transfer that maybe they can come down and harass. Of course, there's a couple probes, several probes now. Here comes the Calvary, and there's the Stargate on the way now with one, two gateways total. Warp Gate technology finishing some time ago. Plenty of sentries as well. So Check Prime coming over and spotting. I think he saw the sentries. Yeah, he sees the sentries, so he knows there's not going to be many gateways up there. Not going to be much in the way of tech either, because again, all of that gas right there has gone into the sentries. And we have, do just now have our first Void Ray heading out. It'll pop out about 8.30 or so. And we do have one Overlord, a second one, and of course a third one as well that he knows about. Zerglings, again, just checking on the probe count over here, getting an idea of how many units are contained within the army. Can't really see much more than that, but he knows that, okay, not really a lot else I can do with those, so he wants to kind of keep them close to the watchtower, close to his base, so that way he can run away rather quickly and stay within vision of the watchtower, which is being controlled by one Zergling right now. Also has another one just kind of camping out over here. And, hey, putting those Zerglings to work finally, man. They've been sitting around for way too long. So throwing down several Hydralisks, several Hydralisks. Very interesting move, especially since he's upgrading the Groove Spines as well. He is now working on four geysers worth of gas income. So I'm a little curious to, wow, he is building 11 Hydras. That is quite a lot. I wonder if he's uh, really expecting a large quantity of air. Or if he's anticipating that Gosu Gator is going to be staying on gateway units for a long time again this game. Now, looking around here, we have Gator dropping a couple pylons at uh, areas kind of outside of his base. We don't have a Nidus Worm here. But still, I think this is just a good precaution to take against that Nidus Worm play. Because game number two, that's what cost it for him. I mean, plain and simple. Having a Nidus Worm take out your main, that's, you know, it doesn't really get much more cut and dry than that. But with all these Hydras now taking to the field, not even worrying about spreading the creep with Overlords, he's going to be able to actually do a pretty significant amount of damage. Reason being, we have the army mostly comprising of Sentries and a few Stalkers, both of which are extremely weak to groups of Hydralisk and Zerglings. So you're going to see them, oh, fall back there. Nice force fields going down. This is going to be the saving grace of Gosu Gator right now, keeping those Hydras out of the equation. Of course, this one cannon is going to try to take a couple shots. Not really anything going to be able to come of it though. Committing the Hydras to an attack once again. This time sandwiching off a few of them. Got to watch out for those Phoenix. This time he will be able to lift up any strays, but I mean really again, why would you need to bother? The biggest thing right now is to make sure these Hydras don't do any permanent damage. The thing is, Check Prime is trying to take down all of these sentries here. I think actually focusing them down. Nope, nope, he wasn't focusing them. But if he could have taken out all of those sentries, that would have actually been just a massive hit to Gosu Gator's army because that would have been like 700 gas worth of energy that had just been saving up and could be dropped for hallucinations later. Could have been force fields. You know, obviously the force fields and the defense there proved to be of great value. A Gosu Gator dropping a pylon just inside of the Zergling's vision right there. That's actually kind of ballsy. Not doing anything about it, though. But he is sending in a second wave of Hydras and Zerglings. Kind of a curious decision. I wonder what he's really looking to uh, to be able to do about this. But he will catch the army slightly out of position if he moves in now. But no, he is actually going to be retreating back to the Watchtower, where I think he claimed that one Zergling that he had there. So with more Hydralisks on the way, again, this is just him continuing to expect a heavier air presence. Whoa, nice hit right there. Almost got it. Oh, he does. Check Prime is going to be looking to possibly force an engagement over here, but with a Colossus now in the picture, things are going to change up just a little bit. Range is about 30% complete. Now, of course, Hydras with their range upgrade and Colossi without their range upgrade will be able to uh, to attack each other. When, the, when one is attacking, the other will be within range to do so, as they both have a range of six. 
But when that when that uh, attack range upgrade gets complete for the Colossi, whole different picture. Going from six to nine, that is a massive range upgrade, and I think we're going to see uh, I think we're going to see our Zerg player continue to fall back here. Now notice there is a little bit of Phoenix harassment on the Overlord starting to take place. I don't think we're going to see this really uh, really accomplish too terribly much. But the nice thing about this for Gosu Gator is that we look at the vision now, we see. He spotted a very crucial bit of information that a spire is now on the way. Notice how, in response, he has dropped a Twilight Council. So what he's thinking of doing is continuing to warp in Stalkers while building his third and using those Stalkers with the soon-to-have-a-Blink upgrade to counter the Meatalisk. Now, Blink Stalker is kind of a... Uh, it's going to be a little risky for him, I'm not going to lie. He's going to have to have really good scouting information on the Zerg player. He's going to have to good read, have a good read, rather. Because if he overcommits those Stalkers, he's going to end up without as many Colossi or without as much tech or whatever. You know, each Stalker is 50 gas. So he's going to have to be super careful about that. But at the same time, if he doesn't commit enough, if Check Prime realizes that the Protoss is not taking the threat seriously enough, then he is just going to run this Protoss into the ground with this close-by-air spawning position. And we're going to have to wait and see in the coming moments how this actually unfolds. As we saw so many Mutalists just take to the field, we have, uh, let's see, that's about 14 or so, with three more on the way. And a nice little force right here. Check Prime. Zero, zero on the upgrades right now, but five more Mutas getting ready to join the field. Oh, man. Nice response. Good and quick by Gosu Gator. Now, what is he going to be able to do about this? He's bringing in a couple Stalkers. They do not have the Blink upgrade. You see he's still running in here. This Nexus. Okay, there's the response. We should start to see these, uh, these Mutalists run away. That's what a lot of Zergs do. They'll just... Oh, no. He's going to engage. Very smart move by Check Prime. A lot of Zerg, what they'll do is they'll see, oh, okay, well, here comes the Protoss response. Might as well just leave because chances are they're going to have a crap ton of anti-air. This time, Check Prime decided to stick around, see what he could do, and here's the result, ladies and gentlemen. Knocking, not only taking out several Stalkers, but ending up with a Nexus in his belt. Literally, he's actually flying around with a Nexus tucked into the belt of one of these Mutalists. Very impressive, by the way. You cannot say the Zerg are not technologically advanced. Gravity? Pfft, no problem. But now Check Prime is in just a great spot right now. He's going to be able to bring these Mutas in once again, take out more probes, and this time he's going to have a shot at the pylons, at the tech, and, uh-oh, leaving his Mutas split up like that. And really, the only thing he's going to have a shot at is death right now. So watching the Protoss player continue to rebuild, notice it's kind of interesting. He's not building a Nexus up here. Yes, very low on the minerals, but he's more worried about this. He's hoping to get a, a really, really great positioning on this Zerg player by forcing him up here, basically forcing him here, then he's going to get so many kills. Look at this, folks. These three Colossi just having a field day, knocking out every single ground force. Nothing there was remotely capable of countering Force Field Colossus. The only thing that is, is a whole boatload of Mutas and Zerglings getting ready to run into this base as well. You're going to see the second Nexus go down. I'm calling it right now. It's going to go down. There's nothing the Protoss player can do about it. And there it goes, leaving the income for Gosu Gator in shambles. I mean, this is just wrecked. 56 to 60 harvesters, but again, you can't do anything with them, man. They're all just sitting around here waiting for a place to mine. You look up here at this expansion, it's pretty well saturated. Nice offensive blink, picking off quite a few of these Mutalists. But, I mean, they're being rebuilt right now. So, where does that lead the Protoss? Well, looking around right now at the Units tab, 29 Mutas, 31 Stalkers. We see him actually keeping those up in the high ground. I mean, hey, why not kill some more probes, right? Check Prime's got, you know, he's got this right now. Map control, economy, a little bit behind on supply, but I think at this point it really does not matter that much because so many of those Protoss players' workers are not working. They don't have a Nexus. Can't go anywhere. Well, of course they can't hang out here, but I mean, who wants a bunch of probe bums hanging out? 
this high yield expansion, finally money. This is going to actually give the Protoss quite a good kickstart. I'm really curious to see if the Zerg decides to let this one go, or if I think he knows about it. Yeah, he knows about it. Okay. So I'm sure at some point he's going to try to hit it, but wow! Look at this. Check Prime again, just choosing to engage. He knows that he has the superior numbers. Working on weapons one. Ten more Mutalists on the field. This is, again, just opting for opting to take advantage of the fact that, yes, Blank Stalkers are mobile, but not as mobile as Mutalisk here between the natural and the main. There's nothing the Protoss can do about it. He can just keep on reacting, and that's about it. I mean, he could try to get a couple Archons still in the base, but now we have an expansion going down. Force Fields, oh man, going to be able to nail a ton of Zerglings. They're going around like sharks looking for any kills, but this Nexus is going to drop as well. Oh my god, great play here by Check Prime. This, oh, nice response by Gosu Gator to be able to come in at the 11th hour here and save this. Nice blink as well, popping off even more Mutalisks. So with another hatchery on the way, we take a look at the economy now that this pressure is being continuously applied. 47 to 60. We see the mineral income is fairly even, but look at the gas. That is just such a huge increase compared to the Protoss player that I really don't know if Ghost of Gator is going to be able to come back from this. I really, truly don't. I think that he's done a really good job reacting, but the Zerg player has just been so so adamant about pressing on with the aerial harassment. You see him continuing two different areas with the Mutalist, working on knocking out the pylons, trying to keep the Protoss supply count. I mean, keep in mind, not only is that supply, you know, obviously it's annoying to have your supply dropped like that, but you're also going to have buildings that are unpowered, not able to use them, so that's going to limit the army, plus the money that it takes to invest back into the pylons, which is one of the areas that the Protoss player is hurting right now. Up until recently, he's had a lot of probes, just not really able to mine with the same level of efficiency as the Zerg. And so now here comes even more meters, about 30 of them or so. Check Prime knows he can take this down. He's going to be knocking out even more Stalkers. And I mean, really, he can take it. Look at the look at the income right now. Look at the stored money. 2,200 minerals, 1,400 gas. You could see a majority of these rebuilt in about 25, 30 seconds. No problem. So with yet more gas on the way, we take a look at that now, and we see it's still borderline on a thousand. There goes the Twilight Council. And now we have a greater spire on the way, folks. Gotta be careful with these Colossi. They're one of the reasons the Protoss still has ground domination. If he ended up losing those, the Zealots would be pretty much responsible for cleaning up a lot of the mess, as again, those Blink Stalkers would just be running around putting out fires at all the expansions with the Mutalisk just continuing to knock out the Nexus. And we see here at the income, now the Zerg is tipping above 1,000. Look at the resources lost right now, kind of give you an idea of how things are going. Look at the workers lost, 30 to 3. It might help if my control button worked either, or that menu. So, uh, looking at the upgrades, 2-0-0 zero, zero for the Protoss, I think Zerg Air is 0-1. Yeah, it's 0-1 right now. We do have weapons, melee 1, armor 1 on the way. And the Zerg player moving forward, he's... I'll tell you what, looking at this, not a lot in the way of anti-air, and the Protoss really doesn't have a lot to invest in it. He is very gas-heavy right now. I think possibly some Archons would be a very nice thing to have at this point. He is building another Twilight Council, so he could be going that route. But when you consider how much damage these Mutas have done, if... You manage to get just a couple Archons around in your army, maybe leave a couple of them in base, as well as a couple Stalkers. That will allow the Protoss to start projecting some force, get out onto the map. As up until this point, he has just been defending his base. Here goes Zerglings again, going to the probe line. Uh-oh. Oh man, he is just going to be going for the Nexus again. This could be going down, ladies and gentlemen. Another substantial loss for the Protoss economy, as we see him just moving forward, hoping to maybe just try to counter or at least establish map control, not really reacting to anything. I mean, what would be the point? So many Zerglings down there. He was doing everything he could with those Zealots. The army over here would not be able to react in time. More, we have a few Brood Lords on the way. I almost called them Brood Lords. But with so many of them on the field, flying above it, I think that when they move in, when Check Prime goes in for the kill, I don't think that Protoss is going to be ready for it. Dark Shrine is on the way. 
We could just be seeing those turned into Archons, or he could be going for some type of late game expansion harass slash denial. Let's look at how Check Prime could deal with that. We don't see a lot in the way of detection at the expansions. Matter of fact, we don't see hardly any. But watching here, we do have a couple Zealots that were just mopped up. Watching those start to take out the expansion there. Knew it really wouldn't last too terribly long with all those forces running around. For check with Zealots coming into the base as well. Working on taking on some of these, uh, some of these drones. Warp Prism on the way. Very nice idea. That's something I definitely wanted to see here. Oh, you know what? Let's actually answer the question. I know I said it earlier. Where is where is the Warp Prism? There it is. Okay, yeah, 100, 100 there. Cool. I knew it was 100, 100, but I just completely forgot if it was shields or armor. Or shields or health, rather. <laughs> Warp Prism with 40 armor. Yeah, that'd be, uh, that'd be a thing to see. So more Broodlords, I mean, just really, as far as the Protoss is concerned, I have to say this. Mo Broodlords, mo problems. I had to get it out there. I'm sure you'll forgive me at some point. But Dark Templar, Zealots pinned up against the wall. Where are those DTs warping in, actually? Ooh, sneaky. Can they coming in up here? Working on taking out the Greater Spire, denying that, ex denying that upgrade, denying any more Broodlords who sell the Zerg, was able to cram out the last one. We also do have a couple queens hanging out midfield, continuing to spread the creep as well. And we see poor Zella just getting knocked out super quick. We are going to have this hive taken out. So the Zerg is going to be in a little bit of a predicament. Can he knock out the, sp the spawning pool? Oh no, so close, but not quite. Total resources lost now, 23.6 to 18. And we see several high Templar now in the field. He does have size storm. So that's going to help him out a good bit. More Zealots on the way. We do have detection at the expansion this time. This is where the lair is going to be. A little bit farther out. Um, you know, oh, <laughs> well, hey. I mean, hey, why not? Uh, when you can make one, why not make two, right? So Zealot's going to be able to take out this expansion if the Zerg does not respond to it. Although, I'm sure he will. I mean, he's got a whole bunch of Mutas here. And now the Broodlords with the Infestors and the Queens going to be moving in for the kill. Protoss really doesn't have a whole lot he can do about this. Fungal growth will be absolutely phenomenal. Nice storms landing on top of a lot of the Broodlords, forcing a ton of them away. We're seeing that collective health of their pack just dropping down to about 50%. Now about 40%. Oh, good heals. Nice last second catch by Check Prime as the Protoss continues to move forward. Ghost of Gator is going to have to do something about these Broodlords here way far back. All these Broodlings are just keeping the Stalkers at bay. I mean, really, what can you do with a 10-second blink cooldown? Everything he possibly can, but will it be enough? That is the question. Force Field is actually going to keep the uh, keep the Broodlings from attacking the Stalkers in one direction, forcing them to kind of a little nice, uh, nice makeshift corner here. But there's the GG! From Ghost of Gator. Get it? Because he has two G's in his name? Yeah! Alright, so that's going to be it for the semifinal series, guys. Thank you for watching. Next game you will watch on this channel will be... Will it be the Grand Finals? Or are we going to have a uh, third place match? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's check it out. See you there.